Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. We're checking out Outpath today. Developers, thank you for a key. This looks to be a game about clicking, collecting, and it's all very chill. It's nice to do something relaxing for a change. Hey, speaking of change, you ever think about changing browsers? Perhaps to Opera GX, the browser for gamers and the sponsor of this video? Let's talk about some neat things Opera GX can do for you. All of your Chrome extensions work. You can literally just go to the Chrome web store and install them like normal. So you'll never be without your most necessary extensions. And also, it's easy to import settings from other browsers just by going over to this thingy, down to this thing, clicky-click the things you want, click import, and everything's done. And of course, there's the mods, where you can choose from a huge range of things that will switch up your browser's colors, not to mention add live wallpapers, as well as sounds while you're typing, sounds when you're opening tabs, sounds when you're closing tabs, all kinds of stuff. And you can mix and match anything you want. There's even a Let's Game It Out mod. And who doesn't want this? Hey there, it's Josh. Yeah. And of course, my favorite thing in Opera GX, which is the GX Corner, which is a great way to keep track of all kinds of gaming news, like release dates, what's on sale, games that are free right now, and all kinds of other gaming tidbits that you can customize to view just the way you want to. And if you download through my link in the description, you'll also get this section that'll update every time I put out a new video. Oh, and the browser is free on both PC and mobile. So if this sounds good to you, head on down to the linky and get a little Opera GX in your life. And thanks again to them for sponsoring. But enough talk. New game! Oh, the game is hitting me with the hard questions immediately. If you don't like clicking things a lot, you can enable hold click mode now. No thank you, I'm ready to click. So here we are in the game. Don't rush me. So here we are in the wild world of Outpath, a game with beautiful bright colors and chunky pixels. It's like I'm in a Minecraft YouTuber's thumbnail. Oh, and look at this, my favorite word on the screen already. Break. Well, the game wants us to gather wood and fiber, the cornerstone of every healthy diet. So I believe all we have to do is walk up to these trees and hit break. There we go, and we do a little tree smacking. One click, one smack. Wow, they weren't kidding, that's a lot of clicking. Or we can go into the options and change click to automatic. And now when we walk up to stuff, it automatically punches it. Oh boy, what a deal. I love having to do even less. Although I did notice something, which is if we compare the speed to how fast automatic goes, it looks like if I click fast enough, I can do it faster than the automatic one. So if I wanted to be a total tryhard, I could absolutely take that tree down faster manually. And then I got another bright idea. Why not just use an auto clicker. So we're gonna set up a script here where it's gonna click the mouse every one millisecond. In theory, that means it's trying to click a thousand times every second. Doesn't mean the game is going to allow that, but doesn't mean we can't try. Okay, so let's see how fast this goes now. Oh, okay, good. That worked great. Look how much faster that is compared to the other two methods. And the best part is it's running all the time. So as long as I'm looking at stuff that it can punch, it's just gonna hit stuff at maximum punchability. No manual clicking required. Which is good, because it lets us focus on other things. Like, what the heck is this number? It appears to correspond with this one in the upper left corner. And I don't really know what that number is supposed to mean, but it's basically like your currency. And it appears you get that from punching pretty much everything. So as I run around my little island here, we're just amassing more and more points for all the things we're punching. Actually, come to think of it, where is here anyway? So far, it looks like a tiny little island surrounded on all sides by ocean. Let's get a better look. Can I jump in the water? Oh, thank goodness. I wasn't actually sure, so I'm glad that gamble paid off. So as we swim farther away, it is indeed one little blocky island. Wait, can we just keep going farther and farther away? Yes, we're about to find out. The game does have some survival meters, by the way, which is to say tiredness and hunger. Our guy is naturally already starving for some reason, which is indicated by our screen getting a little darker and these lovely stomach sounds. So hungry. Too bad we're getting farther away. I mean, I don't know if anything bad happens when you get that hungry. Not like we care that island is turning quickly into a distant memory. Uh-oh, what's happening? Looks like we're falling and falling. And it looks like there's other islands hiding from us down there. Is this what it's like to be born? So be it. I'm ready for my next adventure. Huh? Oh, it put us back at our island. Well, I guess that'll teach me to try and escape. Let's see, how do I get back up here now? I can't just scale the walls like Spider-Man, can I? Wow, we're really athletic. Let's celebrate by punching more stuff. And in fact, before we do anything else, I'm just gonna keep punching stuff until both of our meters have run all the way out. Just so we can see what it does. Okay, so after doing this for a little while, here's my conclusion. Not a lot happens. Your guy's tummy keeps groaning, and you remain all sorts of tired, but the meter never goes entirely down. It does look like you're basically fatigued, though. Because I notice as I mill around, 
around, I'm walking a little bit slower. And it's possible I'm hitting things slower, but how am I supposed to tell? And now we have all kinds of stuff. 288 wood, a whole bunch of flowers, a whole lot of this, a whole bunch of stone. You get the idea. And we also have our food stuff right over here. And here we can eat our delicious oranges that up my food and my tiredness and give me 10% critical chance. You mean like a critical hit on these trees? Works for me. And we also have sumptuous berries. Or we have this. <laughs> Fibers. Gives you nothing but fills you up. I'm sure you can guess which one we're about to eat. Mmm, so good. Or if you want to play the game in a much more relaxed setting, you can just turn hunger and sleep off entirely. Don't worry though, we can still eat those fibers. It's just all for pleasure now. Anyway, let's go check out whatever this thing is. Now, I don't know how I feel about the part where it turns to stare at you, but at least we can get a basic understanding of what this means. Right now, this thing is at zero out of 350 of these things, which happen to be these things that I have. And after all the resource slapping I've done, I have 6,032 of them. And looking over at this main thing, we have the option to expand the biome. Don't mind if I do. Yeehaw. Okay, let's see. Where is this? Oh, hello, new biome. Let's have some celebratory fibers. Mmm. Okay, let's go over here and see what we got. So far, it looks like we have a lot of sand. Wait. I stand corrected. Oh my god, is that a turtle? Oh my goodness, it's so adorable. Don't worry, little guy. I won't let anything happen to you. Unless I can click on you. Can I click on you? Well, hey, 52 points is 52 points. And some free meat, thank you. I guess it's all free after they're dead. Oh my god, even worse than that. Not only can we attack them, but we can steal their turtle shell. I'll be taking that, thank you. Oh no, he's naked now. <laughs> Aw, oh, he got away. Consider yourself lucky. Anyway, so here we are on a new island. New things to punch like mounds of sand. Not to mention these fancy floating books. Tell me more. Oh, you're really gonna tell me more. I'm glad it's called informative, especially since I'm not gonna read it. And because this game is consistent, the way you take in this knowledge is, of course, you keep smacking the book until the information is now inside you. Well, thank God I'm hungry for knowledge now because there's another book. What do you got for me? Wallop reduces objects' health by 8%. What do we mean by objects? Like these? things? Sure, sounds good to me. Also, my god, why is it nighttime so much in this game? I guess I should examine the build menu at this point. We've got all kinds of stuff like utilities and production, wheat thingamabob, a sweaty book, machinery, or as I like to call it, the settings icon, and finally base, where we have my favorite new item, decorations like a bed, which as you can see, I haven't unlocked yet, but we'll get there soon, I'm sure. For now, we're gonna start over here in production, where we can make the ever-important workbench. Okay, let's see. Where do we want to put this? Hey, hey, you! I see you right there. Ah, much better. Anyway, where was I? Oh, right. Workbench. Ooh, tools. Now we don't have to use our fists of fury anymore. Now that we can chop things and hack at things and slay things and dig things. Couldn't be more simple. I gotta wait 10 seconds. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with myself in the meantime. And there's no hyper aggressive turtles for me to defend myself against. Oh, it's done. And we'll just craft that and wait the excruciating 10 seconds and rinse and repeat. And now we have all kinds of new fun toys. Let's test out the flint sword. Hello, cow friends. Yep, works as intended. Works on trees, too. I'm assuming the idea is that if you use the proper tool for the proper job, for example, the axe on this tree, it'll chop even faster. And yeah, that's definitely the case. But I'm too lazy to switch back and forth every time I want to chop or dig or whatever. Until we come up with something better, I'll just default to the sword for everything. So we can feel big and strong. Anyway, it's time to work on the next thing we're gonna build. Specifically, this research table. I bet that's where all the fun unlocks are. Ah, uh, yes, there we go. The whole one thing we can research right now. The furnace. Allows you to smelt ores and forge other types of objects. And then the table bounces with excitement until it explodes forth with knowledge. Ah, here we go. It's opened up to more stuff. Look at that. All kinds of essentials. Like a sleeping bag and a spinning wheel and an anvil and a mailbox. It allows you to read really important letters. Well, we'll see about that in a millennia when you're done researching. Okay, I can't wait that long. We're making more tables. Ah, that's much better. It's like crappy Fantasia in here. And there we go. All the tables have shot me full of knowledge. We're gonna start with building a sleeping bag because god am I tired of seeing nighttime. Oh, I can't put this on the water. Okay, second best then. We're gonna sleep up here with all the rocks. Nighty night. Oh, and it turns out if you don't do anything, you just keep sleeping. <laughs> Forever. Oh, so peacefully. Oh, right. I gotta hit the giant button that says wake up. Okay, great. Just me and these cows staring at me. Okay, now I really wanna find out about this letter box, which means first we need to make a furnace, which I'm gonna put all crappy just like that. Okay, and what we want is a copper ingot. Let's make five of them, I guess. God, it takes 15 seconds for each one. 
And with our copper ingots finally done, it's time at last for the mailbox, which I still don't really understand how this is going to work, but I'm excited to learn. I'm sure it's going to come in real handy, you know, on this island in the middle of nowhere. I guess we'll just sit here and wait until we get mail, even if it takes all night. Oh, hey, there we go. In the early dawn hours, we got some mail. Discreetly delivered by a ghost. Oh, boy, I can't wait to read this letter. You were an accident. Wow, game. Why would you say such things to me? I'm just kidding. That's not what it said. It actually said your new life begins here. Try not to overthink it and everything will go smoother. Sagely advice. I can imagine Gandalf saying either of these. And that was all the mail we had. Really glad we did that. Well, and with that out of the way, let's go ahead and do some more building. And by that, I mean, let's build all the stuff we don't already have. And everything here is going to take some bread which we can do over here in the furnace, which is just coal, stone, and sand. Thank goodness we have a lot of those. And while we wait for this excruciating 20 seconds of brick, we'll just collect more resources and wail on the local population. Oh good, I think it's finally done. Thank you for my 15 bricks. Time to go build crazy. An anvil there, a spinning wheel here, an advanced workbench right there. Out of the way, Rock, we need to put a magic thingy right there. I gotta be honest, under the machinery option, I'm really curious what this thing is, because it says deforest. And then it has two ominous silhouettes. Wait, figured out what it is. It's these two things I haven't researched yet. It looks like we've got this red one, the slayer of all things, slays nearby creatures and catches bugs. Of course we're gonna research this. And the other thingy, this yellow one, is the breaker. Breaks nearby resources. Things are getting good because we're seeing a little bit of automation. Oh, and while we're here, we'll research this other last thing. The cave entrance. The entrance to your personal cave where rare minerals and ores appear more frequently. Oh, how excited I am to show the entire world my personal cave. And with these things ready to go, let's try them out. As soon as we make some glass, it's always something, isn't it? It's always 20 seconds, isn't it? Stop right there. I found the answer to our problems. Here in the anvil, we have access to better, faster tools. But more importantly, this ring allows you to reduce crafting time by clicking structures by negative 5%. Give me this ring and give me it now. I've never been so excited in all my life. Okay, it's done. Let's try it out. Hello, you. I would like to now accelerate crafting by clicking as fast as I can. Now we're talking. Christmas has come early. You mean to tell me now anytime I want to build anything? Like, let's say I want 20 copper ingots. Instead of waiting the whole 15 seconds, I can just click to perfection. I can deal with this. Oh my god, it works here too. It's so easy to get anything done now. And now that we've got these fancy new copper tools, we can be bashing and grabbing even faster. But I think we have enough, so now it's time to slay and break. Okay, so it looks like these things have a radius. So we'll just go ahead and put one right over here. Oh yeah, we can already see it doing its thing. So efficient. And we'll put Put one here, as well as up here. Not to mention one right next to my bed, right next to my face. And one here, and here. And we'll do the same thing for the red ones, so that it can dispatch everything that lives. Yes, there we go, that's much better. What a technological marvel. It's just me and my killing machines now. Hey, you butterfly, this is a no-fly zone. And we'll just let this run all night. And then you go around and you pick up all your goods, and it's like a mystery box of exciting stuff. You never know what you're gonna pick up. And also because you gain points every time you destroy something that keeps happening automatically feels good it's not a perfect system though you still have to pick everything up by hand and i think it despawns over time and also these things won't run forever as you can see they have a limited charge and you have to manually go up and charge them i mean it's not the end of the world it's pretty easy to do not to mention if we go back over here to our inscription table there's a couple of fun things we can craft here mainly this glass orb generates 15 credits every five seconds and it just so happens i have all the materials for that now well sign me up of course we want more ways to make this go faster. There's even a version of this for when you're not playing. Earn 0.5 credits per second while you're offline. Don't mind if I do. Okay, well now we have to know. If I exit out of the game, set my PC's clock to 12 hours later than it is, and then fire the game back up... Ah, I see. We've gained 14,400 credits. Wonderful. Probably time to come back to this thing and do some upgrading. You only need 800? I feel like I can probably afford that. So here you go. And it looks like that buys us even more island. More minerals, new skill books. And of course, I could do all these by hand, but I think you know what's gonna happen. That's right, this beautiful serene island turns into our technological paradise. Yeah, do everything for me. And let's go over here and unlock another tier. And that leads to a new island. 
Where is it? Oh, oh, there it is. By this point, I'm sure you know the drill. Find a new book, assimilate it into your face, find the next book, be excited by its secrets, switch it to the correct tool automatically. I gotta see this in action. Well, it's every bit as exciting as you hope it would be. Running around, hitting different stuff, and watching your tool set just automatically switch on its own. I mean, I'm sure it would be exciting if we still collected things the old-fashioned way. Nothing makes the nighttime more festive than colors of ketchup and mustard. And I guess this is our life now. We just come back to this thing, feed it more beautiful resources, excitedly go check out the new island, smash my face into all this knowledge, cover it in these things, and collecting oh so many resources before coming back over here and no more upgrades, huh? Well, I didn't see that coming. Luckily, we can still upgrade these little guys. Like this one wants three leather, which amazingly we don't have. This sounds like a job for the spinning wheel. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Feels good to do some manual smacking once in a while. Okay, and now we can give it three leather. And it looks like that gives us more credits, but more importantly is we fulfill all of these little needs here, of which we very easily have all the rest of the supplies. Except, wait, do I have 150 wood? Do I ever? Here you go, have this. The column entirely disappears, and that's when a new island appears. A considerable distance away, too. Well, let's swim our way over there. We got skill books to collect. Oh, and there's the column thingy now. Demanding more credits. In addition to this, it looks like we have all new items, like this beetroot, not to mention this wheat, as well as this exotic rock. How exciting! Oh, and also, good news. We have more mail. Let's see what it says. Dr. Pepper is a D-tier soda. Gandalf. Yeah, you tell him, Gandalf. Ugh, it's such a pain going back and forth. Such a trial to go from island to island. But luckily, I found a solution for this. See, over here in the key bindings, I noticed one thing in particular that I found interesting, and that's unstuck player that's bound currently to the F2 key. And here's basically what it does. If you hit that button, you get shifted forward a little bit. Now, obviously, this is supposed to be so if you get stuck, the game can force you forward a little bit and help get you out of whatever you're stuck on. Or we could take that command, attach it to another script, so that it tries to push F2 every millisecond. And here's the results of that. Oh, yeah. That was great. If we get up somewhere nice and high, get a running jump, and then turn it on, look at that. We can just jettison our way over there. And look, I know that this isn't supposed to be, like, an actual feature, but why not use it when we need it? It's so convenient. Oh, actually, you know what? Now I'm super curious to something. You remember how when we first started, we tried to go out to the edge of the world, and then we fell off? Well, let's head back out there again, because I have an idea. Okay, so I think we're kind of a ways out now. Everything's looking pretty small. And as you can see, when we fall off the level, there's all these other structures that I'm assuming are the things that we can summon later. But obviously we can't reach those before we get spawned back into the level. But what about if we walk all the way out to the edge, wait until we fall off, and then hyperspeed our way back over to the structures? Can we make it? There's only one way to know for sure. Oh, yep. That's an absolute yes. Yes, we can. And here we are in our version of the Upside Down. Sure is noisy down here. This is obviously the land that we'll eventually get. As soon as we pay for it, it's going to fly up into the sky and join that little piece right there. And it doesn't really look like there's much we can do down here. There's no reason resources to speak of, but I did notice something else, which is that we can indeed place stuff down here, and so now I'm super curious. When we summon this piece of land by paying for it and it flies up there, is this gonna stay here or go with it? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out, isn't there? And we'll also check out this thing soon, as soon as we test this out first. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> well, now we know. Anyway, let's head back down here and see what that other structure is. It looks like a hashtag, or maybe a Huh? If you're reading this, you should know that there is a prize, one that many people have asked me for. I don't know why. Prizes? I love prizes. But I'm also far more concerned about what this thing is at all. It appears to be walls on all sides, although there is a little thing we can stand on right here. And now we're gonna force ourselves through the wall with our hyperspeed. Oh, uh, where are we? Exit cave? Oh, you know what? I bet this is our personal cave. You know, the one we never built an entrance for. Wait, what happens if we exit and there's no entrance? Only one way to find out. Oh, it just places us here in the water, in familiar territory. And let's see if that really was our personal cave. Down we go. Ah, uh, yep, here we are. Down here again. Something I did notice while we're down here is our option to build by pushing Q is actually not allowed. If I try to do it, it just makes this noise. So now I've got a question. If we go back to the overworld, speed our way over to the edge, head back down to the cave the old-fashioned way, forcefully shove yourself through the side. Well, the option is lit up. Can we build now? Oh, happy day. Well, we got to see what happens now, right? If we build a cave entrance inside of our personal cave. I know I want to know. Fingers crossed. Down we go. Well, it just brings you back down. And you can just keep doing this. <laughs> over and over and over again. I'm glad we've made this for ourselves. Well, I'm just gonna leave that right there and we're going back up. 
Huh? What? what? Where am I? I'm back in the air quote other cave. The one with a lot of water noise and the one where I can build again. And it looks like trying to climb out is infinite. You just keep appearing in the same cave. Wait, what happens when I build another entrance? So that now there's two entrances. When I head up this, where does it take me? Somewhere in between. Got it. Well, I'm glad we've created this weird paradox. And unfortunately, the resources are the same. Like if I broke that copper deposit and then I head back down to the other cave, the copper deposit is also gone from here. But the good news is up in our buildy cave is we can put our lovely buttons down so that it continues to do all the work for us. And that's all we could really ask for, right? That we were able to build stuff where we're not supposed to. And if we ever need to get out of here, well, we can always take the front door, also known as one of these walls, and then just fall until we end up back in the real world. Ah, couldn't be more simple. And if we ever need to go back down to the Forbidden Realm, we just climb down one, and then climb down again, and then climb back up one. And here we are again, back in Water World, where building is always allowed. You can actually break the world the opposite direction, too. If you go back down into the quiet cave and then break out of the level and teleport back to the surface, everything's a little bit weird. All the sound effects now have an echo like you're still in the cave, and all the colors are all sorts of off. It's kind of like you're in a Stephen King novel, but as far as I can tell, everything else is still functional. It just looks very, very strange. And the fun doesn't stop there, either. If we head back down into the cave, we can turn this cave into even more alternate dimensions. Here, let me show you what I mean. So out here on the surface, this is the beginning biome. And over here on our left is the other biome we're slowly unlocking. And they all have different names and everything. Like this one is called Amber Path. And if we head back over to the original one, it's called Grasslands. Now, if we're standing over here in Grasslands, and then we hop down into our cave, everything is exactly as we left it. Mailbox and yellow things. But if instead of entering the cave here, we hop on back over to Amber Path, find a nice little spot to put down another one of these trap doors, and then we head down from here, well, isn't that something? The mailbox is gone. The yellow things are gone. Even the trap doors are gone. So what happened, you may wonder? Well, as far as I can tell, it's because when you're on one biome, everything, of course, spawns here, but it also means that everything else on the other island stops spawning. It just looks barren like this. And likewise, if we hop back over to the other biome, everything pops back in, and this island is empty. So I think the game just compartmentalizes what can spawn and when. But what that also means is if I head back over here to Amber Path, and then speed off to the edge of the world, and head back down to our personal cave this way, it means that I can build other stuff here and have two cave setups, which is good because there's some new research options that can help us unlock some fun new stuff, specifically this quadrant right over here, like the mill that allows you to turn some plants into ingredients, and that'll go hand in hand with another thing. A small crop plot lets you grow plants. You can probably see where this is going, right? Let's get these troublesome minerals out of the way. We want this space to be nice and clear for us so that we can lay out our crop plots. Obviously, this is the most premium place to grow plants. There we go. We did it. It looks so even and amazing. And to get some seeds, we're gonna have to make this thing. The mill, which we've kind of run out of space, but hopefully we can put it right. Yeah, that seems good. And inside the mill, we can make stuff like flour and sugar. But of course, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna make seeds. Okay, and we'll just plant some here and there and here. And there we go, a nice, exciting bunch of seedlings. And now for the big question, will this actually work? You know, with this ample supply of sunlight. I guess we'll see. Well, I guess there's our answer. And wow, does it ever grow quickly. I've been standing here all of five minutes and everything is full bloom now. Oh, and in case you were wondering if we do approach it from the other biome, yes, indeed, none of these plants are here, but they are definitely there if we enter from this one. My God, are they ever here? So I guess this is our garden cave. Oh, and you know what else is available to unlock now? This thing that's very valuable to us. The design investigation table. Allows you to unlock new decorations and parts of builds. I like the sound of that. Finally, the thing we've always been waiting for. Stuff like floors and walls. Okay, let's see how these work. Yep, just like you think they would. You build yourself a foundation, and then you can go ahead and build other stuff on top of it. On the other hand, I noticed that it doesn't like to build foundations unless it's firmly on the ground like this. You can just put them right on the water, though. And I'm sure the entire idea is that we can go all the way to the edge of the map with these two, right? I mean, I don't know if that's what we're supposed to do, but it's definitely what we're gonna do. After all, what's really gonna happen? Oh, it looks like we found the end because it won't let me build any farther. Yep, seems about right. And super easy to test. If we just step off, see? Confirmed. But never fear, it turns out there's a way we can get past this limit. So as before, we can't build out any further than this. But if you position things just right, you can build the foundations on the foundations like this. So now there's a foundation on top of that foundation. And if I use my auto clicker and I position myself just right, <laughs> we can start building farther than we're supposed to. See, look, here's where we started. And here's the mess I've made so far. But luckily, I'm getting the hang of this better. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to build this out for a bit, and we'll see how it goes. 
Okay, so I've been doing this for quite a while. Several hours, in fact. And I think this is probably about as far as we need to go. Allow me to demonstrate all the way back at the beginning. You want to see just how far this goes? Well, I'll show you. So after this initial hitch, I figured out how to make them a little more streamlined. So now it's just like going up steps forever. And say goodbye to the island because we're not going to be seeing it for a while. Here, let's turn on hyperspeed and save us some time. So anyway, this keeps going and going and going. You can also see the water line getting a little closer to us. See, look at that. The water line seems to be stopping at a point. If I stop it for just a second, we can see that the water line actually just kind of stops. But that's not going to stop us until we finally reach as far as we've built. And as I look off at the side and see the moon setting with no planet underneath us, I think we can conclude that there's no limit to this. Also, being out this far has some fun side effects. When I move around, the UI elements are a little bit, um, let's say nervous. Like the further out I was getting, the more jittery they were getting. Like they just don't like being out this far. I don't know. I kind of like it. Having everything feel like it's melting. But hey, while we're up here, let's put a nice little viewing space. That way we can really enjoy the view. You know, all the way here at the end of time. That said, I have another idea for how we can launch ourselves even farther. And in less time, too. Here, I'll demonstrate down here what I'm talking about. So if you lay down here in bed, you only have so many options. Mostly just watching as time passes you by. Or you can click the big button that says wake up. And when you do that, of course, your guy stands up. But I've learned that while you're sleeping, you can activate the player unstuck button. And try as you might, the game doesn't let you leave the bed. And if I turn off my little script here, you get rubber banded back. But while it's doing this, it's actually building up each one of these commands. And it's going to execute all these player unstuck commands all at once the moment I hit wake up. Here, let me show you. See how that launched me? Like so far away, I can't see anything around me anymore before it brings me back to home base. And that was just like 20 seconds of doing that. Imagine what this would look like if you charge it up for several minutes. Well, I just did that, so let's see. Oh, and look, since we're launched out so far, we're seeing some of that jittery UI stuff again. And then it sets us back down. So let's see how much speed we can build up if we charge it for a lot longer. Okay, I've let the game sit here, constantly trying to shove forward for an hour now. I can't even begin to tell you what kind of charge this has now, but let's give it a shot and see how far out we go. Oh my! Well, that sure is something, isn't it? I think we're out on the farthest edges of time and space. Call it a hunch, but I think things aren't quite normal over here. I love watching the UI try to make sense of all of this. Not to mention the version number in the bottom right corner. And as we hear the noises of rain, I think we're eventually going to end up right back where we started. Ugh. Ah, here we are, safe and sound. Well, that sure was something. I don't know about you, but I want to be chasing that high the rest of this game now. And yeah, we could be doing stuff back at the islands, but what the hey? We're going to be getting passive income anyway, so we can come back to that anytime. I want to thank Opera GX again for sponsoring this video. Check out my linky in the description to download it for yourself. So I hope you had fun. I know I did. And I'll see you next time.